In this particular lesson, we will talk about step four of hypothesis testing. We remind you of the five steps that we are using for hypothesis testing. And we want to emphasize at this point that there are many other methods of doing hypothesis testing. Some have five steps, some have four steps, some take you to three, some take you through seven, some through nine. But in case that we have, we're going to be using the five steps for hypothesis testing. Step one, we're going to state the null and alternative hypothesis, and at the same time, we're going to identify the claim. In step two, we're going to determine the level of significance, which we also call alpha. We're also going to draw the picture and determine our critical values. In step three, we're going to compute the test statistics. After we compute the test statistics, then we're going to be able to compute the p-value. Step four, we're going to compare the test statistic with the critical value as an alternative, we're going to use the p-value method and compare it to alpha. In step five, we're going to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis and make a concluding statement about the problem at hand. We're going to also use it to support or deny any particular claim that is made about the population parameter. In this particular session, we're going to look at comparing the test statistics with the critical value and as an alternative method, we're going to be able to use the p-value and compare it to alpha. This is step four where we compare the test statistic value with the critical value. And as an alternative, we're going to use the p-value method and compare it with alpha. If we have successfully completed steps two and three, then step four becomes rather easy or rather academic. In the critical value method, we're going to use the picture from step two. The critical values will define our critical regions. If the test statistic computed in step three falls in the critical region, which is also known as the rejection region, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. As an alternative, the p-value method, we're going to compare the p-value to our alpha value that is given to us in step two. If the p-value is lower than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. A simple statement to relate this information is that if the p is low, meaning the p-value, then HO, meaning the null hypothesis, must go. So if the P is low, HO must go. That means if the P value is less than the level of significance alpha, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And let's look at a couple examples here. In this case, the first case, we have our alpha value is 0.05, and our computed Z value is 2.14, and we have a two-tailed test. In our second situation, we have an alpha value of 0 0.01 and our computed Z value is 0 0.18. In our third case, we have an alpha value of 0 0.05. Our computed test statistic value is negative 3.92. In case three, we have a lower tail test. So let's take a look at our upper tail test. In our two tail test, the shaded area represents our rejection region. If our Z value computed in step three falls in that rejection region, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, our Z value is 2.14. We plot it on our graph that we drew in step two, and we find that it is indeed in the rejection region. So in this case, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Looking at our upper tail case, we have an alpha 0 0.01. An alpha 0 0.01 gives me a critical value of 2.33 from the tables that we presented earlier. Given 2.33 as our critical value, we get a Z value of 0 0.018. In this case, 0 0.018 it's not in my rejection region, also called the critical region, and therefore I am not going to reject the null hypothesis in this situation. And in my final situation, which is a lower tail test, my alpha value is 0 0.05. Now look, with an alpha value of 0.05 in my lower case, my lower tail test, my critical value is negative 1.645. And we saw this from the table 
in step two. So with my critical value being negative 1.645 and my z value computed in step three being negative 3.92, I plot that and I find that three point, negative 3.92 is in the critical region. Therefore, in this case, the null hypothesis is going to re, be rejected. Now, what about on the other side of the coin with the p-value? Let's look at the p-value method. In the p-value method, in the first case, my computed z-value is 2.14. In order to find the p-value, I'm going to take 2.14 and plot it. And I know that the p-value is the area to the outside. And in this case, my p-value is 0 0.0162. If my p-value is 0 0.0162 and I have a alpha value of 0 0.1, I'm going to reject the null hypothesis because the p is low. If I have an alpha value of 0 0.05, I'm going to reject the null hypothesis because the p is low. But if I have an alpha value of 0 0.01, I am not going to reject the null hypothesis because the p is not lower than the alpha value. In another case, what happens if I have a two-tailed test and my p and my z value is negative 3.92. I'm going to plot negative 3.92 on one side and 3.92 on the other side. I'm going to find the area to the outside. Now our tables only go to four decimal places, so I use the Excel formula equal normal distribution of negative 3.92. And when I use this particular formula, it's going to give me the area to the left of any z value that I put in there. In there. So I put negative 2.93 in there, and I get 0 0.0004. The area to the left of negative 3.92 is 0 0.0004, and the area to the right of 3.92 is 0 0.0004 because of symmetry. Therefore, in order to get my p-value when I have my z-value is, is negative 3.92 and I have a two-tailed test, I'm going to multiply my p-value times 2. My p-value now becomes 0 0.0008. As you can see, at each level of alpha, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01, we're going to reject the null hypothesis because 0 0.0008 is always lower or less than my alpha value. In essence, the bottom line to all of this is that the p-value is the lowest level of alpha in which the null hypothesis can be rejected. In the real world, we normally don't have alpha, or we normally are not given alpha. In the real world, we compute the p-value. If the p-value is acceptable, then we accept the null hypothesis, or We compute the p-value, and if the p-value is acceptable, because that's the lowest risk that we can take, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. That is the end of step four.